A very good morning to you all. And uh, we begin now with the advanced series of R. And the first example I take is the use of second R library. And today we'll do it in R Markdown. So uh, I'll tell you what an R Markdown document is. And in case you want more details, you could go to my YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Vipin's Biotechnology Classroom, into the playlist for R and introduction to R for beginners and biologists. And in this one here, it is lecture number nine r9 markdown uh, analyze share and reduce code and results with r markdown right and then of course i must thank all the subscribers i have more than 1025 subscribers now and the channel is growing i have more than 13,000 views as of today so which is very nice so let's get back to work and let's get back to uh r markdown and to second r so here we are let me first give you a brief of our markdown. So how do you open an R markdown document? You can go to file and in file, you click on new file. And here in this case, you go to R markdown, right? So this is the default document that will come. You can give a title. Let me say R, R, K, D, O, W, R markdown, right? And say, okay. And here you are, this is your new document. So here you are, you can remove all of this, right? This can be removed here. You can also remove this part. So to create a chunk or a part of program that you want to execute as a whole, you basically start with three commas here. This is the comma on this first key on the second row in a QWERTY keyboard, right? And uh, on the top, you'll have a tilde sign. So you can then create a chunk by creating double curly brackets and putting R in between. And then wherever you want to close the chunk, you have to put these three commas again. Again, this comma is basically the comma on the second row first key in the QWERTY keyboard, right? So here you are, this is your comma here. And now you can write your code in between. For example, I just write a simple example, print, This is Dr. Whippen's Biotechnology Classroom on YouTube. Right. And then you get two buttons here. This button is to run all chunks above. There is no chunk above this, so you don't really have to run this. And this is the other one, which is to run the current chunk. When you press this here, you get the output right below here, right? And then of course, uh, once you're done with the program, you can go to net and in net, you can say net to PDF or net to word and it will net and produce a PDF document of your program. For example, here, right? So now it is creating your PDF. And now your PDF is ready. And here you are. This is your uh, PDF of the program that you run and its execution. So the execution will be just below the line that you execute. So R Markdown is, uh, is a standard way of uh, reproducing and sharing your scripts. So we close this here now and we get back to work and we get back to second R. Well, let me also show you what are we dealing with. So we are dealing with a file called gabdias.txt. This is in my our human genome directory here. So let me just show you that file. This one here is the document that we're talking about, this one. And here in this case, I have two sequences. One is the human GABDS gene sequence. This is GRC38 primary assembly human genome. The coordinates are given homo sapiens, right? Chromosome 12. And then you have a second sequence, which is from the mouse. And this is basically, again, uh, mass muscular strain, chromosome 6. And this is from the GRCM39 assembly, right? So this is the basically the same gene in two uh, species, human and mouse. So this is a multifaster file with two sequences, one from human, one from mouse. The gene name is CAPDH, right? So we close this here, and now we get back to our work. So first, of course, you have to install the library if you have not pre-installed. So in my case, it is pre-installed in, in case you need to install it for the first time. This is the command, install.packages, and in double quotes, the library name, second R, right? 
or you could go from here, you could go from uh, packages here. In packages, you could go to install, and in install, you will have a direct connection to the comprehensive R archive network or CRAN repository. And here you can type in your library that you want to install. So if you see here, it is already prompting me second R. So I'll say second R. And when I say install, it will install the second R library onto my local R studio, right? So in my case, it is already installed, so I'm not going to install it. But of course, to call it into your program, you have to write this command, library, and in round brackets, the name of the library, that is second R here. Uh, in R markdown, this is one chunk. If you see, when I click on this, it says chunk number one, right? This is chunk number one. When I click on this play button here, all instructions in the chunk one will be played out. So let me just play this here. Then we move on to the second part, and the second part is to define your working directory. So if you remember again, in the previous lectures, I've emphasized that working directory is basically to ensure that uh, the R has a direct path to the file that you want to. Uh, read. So therefore, what I do is I define my working directory. I say set working directory and I give the file path where my file is. So I'm giving basically the F folder, R human genome folder, and within that, the file that I'm going to read is gabdsec.txt, right? So this is basically a convenient way to ensure that you don't have to write the file path every time that you want to access the file. So therefore, you directly do a set working directory and then you basically give the file path until the subfolder where the file is right so here you are let me just set the working directory now so again you can play here so you say play and your working directory is set to fr human genome so next we are going to read the file so this is commented again you know this is not a part of execution this is more of a force to tell the user what you're going to do in this chunk so this is chunk number three here right so this chunk number three and now of course uh, i will uh, open the file and read it. So, so I use the variable name DNA and in DNA I'm reading the file and I have a function called read.fasta in the second R library that can read the FASTA files. So I say read.fasta and in round brackets file is equal to and then in double quotes the name of the file. So this is basically to tell uh, uh, second R what is the file that has to be read. And then, of course, I can define sec type equals to DNA. I could also say sec type equals to RNA. And then with a comma, I say force DNA to lower equals to true, which means the sequence would be then converted to lowercase in case there is something that is not in the lowercase. Right? And uh, then, of course, I'm printing my sequence that I've read here. So this is now in DNA. So one more time, I'm reading the sequence into a variable name called DNA. So my object here is DNA. And I use read.fasta command, and then I specify the file name, the sequence type, and whether I want it in upper voice or lower case. So that is also equated to true. And then I'm checking for my DNA here. So let me run this part now. We will have two large sequences to show. So here you are. So if you see here, it is still loading and it is showing up here in the just below the command, what is the sequence that is being read? So here you are, this is the first sequence. And then if you go down further, you have the annotation for the sequence. And then this is your second sequence here. This is your second one. And this again has the annotation at the bottom here. Right? So it says NC0072.7. And then it also gives you the coordinates starting from X position to Y position. And then, of course, the class is SecFast DNA. Right? So this is basically, and also it gives you the details. What is the sequence that you're reading? So this one here is from mass musculus uh, from coordinates 12514330 to 12513881518815. Right? So this is basically the details of the sequence, as is mentioned in the sequence that you have retrieved. Since this is a multifaster file, we are interested to know how many sequences are there in this file. So that can be done using the command length DNA, right? So this is DNA is the object into which you've read the sequences. All the multifaster sequences are here. You say length DNA, it will give you the value of number of sequences that are present in this file. So number of sequences within the file. So let me run this here again. And when you press this here, you see the number is two. I've already shown you that the number is two in this multifaster file, right? There are two GABDH sequences. First one is from the human, the second is from the 
mouse. So now we want to extract the names of the sequence that are present in the, the multifaster file. So for that, now you can reuse the command get names in second R. And within that, you give your object uh, name that is DNA. And you equate it to names. So therefore, uh, whatever is read here is now transferred to names. And you can print names here, right? Here again, you run this part and you get the names of your sequences. So this is the two sequences that you have. One is NC001212, and the coordinates are given. The second one is again NC00072.7, and the coordinates are given again, right? So this is to get you the names of the sequence, but if, if you see name is not conveying the full idea of the sequence because you still do not know which of these two is human, which of these two is mouse. So for that, we'll say annotation, right? So we'll say get anot. Get annotated a not is a function in second R again to pull out specifically the annotation line of the first ref line in completeness. And we can equate it to annotation here, right? So let me just use the current symbol that is equal to. And we could equate it to annotation here and then we print our annotation. So let's see what we get here. So you press run again and here you are, right? So you get the full names now. So this is NC0012 chromosome 12, uh, X position to Y position, homo sapiens, chromosome 12, GRCH13, primary assembly. This one here is NC0072.7. And then you have the coordinates of the sequence here, mass musculus, strain C57BL by 6, chromosome 6, GM, GRCM39. So you get the detailed information, the def line of the pasta format is directly printed here. So you get all the information about the sequence that is present in the definition line of the pasta format. Next, we move on and we want to uh, basically check the length of the individual sequences in this file. So remember, this is a multi file with two sequences. So we should get length output in terms of two sequences. So this is the command that you use here that is called get length. The command used in second R is get length. And then, of course, the object name is DNA, and this is equated to len underscore set. So let me run this part now again, and you'll be able to get lens for two sequences. So here you are, the first length, uh, the first sequence, which is from human, is 3855 base pairs. The second sequence, which is from mouse, is 4616 base pairs in length. This is the same gene, GAP-DH, that you're talking of. And you know, GAP-DH is present on chromosome 12 in human and chromosome 6 in mouse. Next, we want to see the composition of the sequences. We have two sequences in this file, and we want to check what is the ATGC ratio in these sequences. So for that, the command is count, and then the, in round bracket is the object name, and then because this is each individual sequence is a list in the main object, you use double uh, square brackets, and within this, you write one for the first one, and then you're looking for single nucleotides and their composition so with a comma, you say one, and then close the bracket here. Likewise, for the second one, you say count DNA. And then here, in this case, uh, you mentioned two because it's the second sequence that you're looking at. And then we're also looking at what is the composition of Indian nucleotides. So therefore, we say one and then close it up with braces. So when you do that, you'll get the sequence composition of each of the two sequences here. So if you see here, this is your first sequence, and this is the composition. This is the second sequence. So it has 990As, 1279Cs, 1259Gs, and 1088Ts, right? So this is basically, and you can see the same here as well, right? Then if you want to check how many of the uh, dinucleotides are present, so then the command is still the same. We say count and then the object name and then for which element that you want to look at. So I say DNA one, and then I'm looking at dinucleotide combinations here. So I write two here. So when you run this chunk, you get all dinucleotide combinations and their occurrence in the, in the sequence of human gap DH because you've used DNA one here, right? Then same way, you could also look at the composition of trinucleotides, say trinucleotide, and then count DNA, and then within curly brackets, one, and then three, because you're looking at three nucleotides. And then you say print trinucleotide count, so this should be able to print your trinucleotide count. So you run this again, and you get your trinucleotide count. Right. Here you are. So this is your 
triple A is 46 times, triple A C is 32 times, triple A G is 65 times, C G A 16 times, and so on and so forth. Right? Next, we want to calculate the GC percentage uh, for sequence one or the human gap DH. So again, there is a direct function called GC, and in GC, you can then mention your arguments in the round brackets. You, the sequence that you want to look at is DNA, and you're looking at the first DNA sequence now because it's a multipass to five. So, and then you close the brackets accordingly. And then when you run this now, so you can run it directly here, you run this, and you should be able to see that you have the GC content as 0.6. Right. So one last thing that I want to show you before we close the second R uh, section is to tell you that you can read your sequence as string as well, right? So if you see here, uh, you have your DNA equals to read.fasta and file equals to gapdh.txt uh, underscore sec.txt. The sec type is DNA. And then with the comma, I indicate that uh, the, it has to be read as, as a string and not as a character vector. So this is your character vector here, right? Every single uh, uh, nucleotide is a single element in the in the vector. But what we want is to be read as a string, all nucleotides together. So you can define and say as dot string equals to true. And when you play now, what you'll get is a string now, right? So this is second R. Second R can be used to read sequence to segregate the attributes of the sequence. So this is uh, the beginning of the advanced course in R. And I would again bring out more videos uh, elaborating on other libraries and their usage. So we stop here and in the next uh, in the next video we'll talk more about sequence analysis in R. Thank you so much.